Good morning, pregame crew. It is Thursday, September 16th, 2021, 822 a.m. Eastern, 622 a.m. Mountain Time. If you are tuning in later in the day, you can fast forward about eight minutes when this says 630 and I will start the market coverage. Between now and then, I'll do housekeeping and I will welcome all you folks and audio visual check, please. Hey Chuck, thank you so very much. Hey Topher, you SEC fraternity boy. Follow the finger, Ra, Ronnie. Hey, hey MTS. Hey, love North Carolina. Hey Ann, KJ, Jason, Armin, Roger, Night Truck, Judd. Thank you, thank you. Hey John, what's up, y'all? I feel like this morning the puzzle. There were extra puzzle pieces on the floor. There's just so much piecing together of all of this. The story of the day just kept getting longer and longer and longer. So we'll see if we can make sense of it all together. Yes, five minute oversold, 15 minute oversold. We do have a level over here, 445625, could possibly use to bottom fish this. It doesn't feel safe right now for me. And my volume is still messing up, guys. I am so sorry. I don't know what to do. So we will just deal with it. Yeah, this is a little bit of a vol climax here going on with ES. I don't know if we have news. I think we may have some retail numbers coming out in seven minutes. I'm not sure. Please confirm. Okay, now we have it back. We have it back for now. We have a potential 12 hour bull flag. Let me go check that out and make sure that's still in play. Yes, still in play, not ideal. Definitely not ideal. I should probably retract that statement. We have plenty of room for a four hour higher low. I'm not gonna mess with it now that I got it back and this has everything that I need to show y'all on it. So I'm just gonna leave it right here. Everybody just stay still, don't move, don't break anything. So if you're interested in my, interested in my chart setup, it's on the screen now. Yellow and purple is the 50 and 200 simple moving average. Green and red is the eight and 21 EMA. The yellow candles represent the JC inside bars. We have the CM ultimate RSI time frame and then Squeeze Pro Indicator by Makito. I am going to say this wrong, but I used to work with some awesome Jewish doctors who taught me Gamar, Shatim, Shatima Tova. I wish you well on Yom Kippur if this is a holiday that you celebrate. Chart Guys Jason, I believe, will be going live in 35 minutes over in the Chart Guys community. So the Chart Guys community, we teach technical analysis. We have a Slack channel with 1,000 of my closest friends, and these are my favorites over here, but you can look and find all kinds of news, and we have awesome, awesome traders who post setups. They post what they're watching. So we have a marijuana channel, crypto, commodities. The wild commodities has been super, super busy. We have uranium, uranium, uranium on top of uranium, and those guys have been all over it. So if that's something you're interested in, check out the link. We also have a swing report service that I run and I with a wonderful team and we pick names that are set up well for the upcoming week or weeks. And most importantly, it's a 42 page document. Let me see if I can pull one up while we're here chillaxing. Come on.
this is what the swing report looks like. This is last week's. So the most important part for me is the week in review. So we have an intro where we go over what happened in the market the prior week and what's coming up. And this is an actual video link you click on and I go over what's setting up in the market for the week in this past week. Daily 50 MA, daily 50 MA. That's what I was just driving home. It is held eight times on ES and so far it was an amazing dip by area. So we go over actual trend, uh, excuse me, the trends are over here with this trend indicator and we go over support, resistance, and we give you a technical analysis blurb that explains what's going on in the chart and what to look for and we give you multiple time frames. So it's so much more than just swing names. The tide pools, you click again on these videos, there's three videos in each report and we go over where is money moving. So we go over levels and then we show you what's going on with the reports themselves, what's going on with, within the sectors. And then we go over the trade opportunities. That's another video and I go over the prior month's names. So typically it can be like 30, 30 names where I go over the names and then we give you the exact levels and how you can trade them. So that's the swing report while I'm here doing housekeeping. We have two more minutes. Jason could we give a discount code out today for the swing report so if you're a tcg member it's already heavily discounted you get approximately 40 percent off i believe i'm not sure so yeah approximately 40 percent off if you are a tcg member if you're not a tcg member it's still very reasonably priced for a year subscription so jason if you could give us a discount code that'd be great we give away discount codes all the time for the chart guys uh, membership, the monthly membership, but let's give away one for the swing report. One more minute. I'm messaging Jason. Hey Tammy, hey Philip, Bridget, Don, and David Baby. Hi Kev, Jorge. Yeah, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and bring a friend. We had some red in the market, and guess what? It was one of our largest viewed shows yesterday, so it always happens. When fear creeps in the market, people go clamoring for information. And it's my contention we should be clamoring for information every day, green or red. Well, Jason must have stepped away from the computer, but we'll get you a code, and I will get you a code before the end of the day. All right, let's get started. I'm gonna clear off my chart setup. I'm Chart Gal Lori, I'm part of the Chart Guys community. Again, we teach technical analysis. You have found yourself, you've landed here. And this is the pregame show where I go over the Fab Four futures, commodities, crypto, movers and shakers of the day. And we look at setups. We have our own, uh, we have our own terminology with Queen of the Mountains, someone, I think, was it you, Jorge? I always forget to who to give credit to. I like King of the Mountain, and someone said suggested Queen of the Mountain, and all it means is these are setups that I find to be more clearly set up for the day. Doesn't mean they'll work. Oh, no problem, Jason, no problem. Okay, so Jason has a code. He'll post it in the room now for the swing report. He loves it when I just ask for things on the fly. So the story of the day is we have a four hour broadening formation. And by four hour broadening formation, that's typically formed by an outside bar. So I'm gonna move this over so you can see it. So you see we have this outside bar here, outside bar here. Outside bar means it just eclipsed the, rain, the prior candle range. And then we develop these four hour broadening formations. So that is what the story of the day is. Davy baby, I see what you're looking at. This left shoulder, head, right shoulder, but typically the right side is a little bit lower than the left side. So this would be one wonky head and shoulders. So I'm just gonna stick with broadening formation on the four hour for the plan and looking for a four hour high or low. So I'm gonna delete that bull flag comment because I don't think that's clear enough for me to make that call. We are where BTC was a few days ago. If you follow Dan's Twitter, he commented on Bitcoin and SPY. They don't always necessarily correlate one to one, but we can learn some things from Bitcoin. And if you don't follow him, he's the chart guys on uh, Twitter and I'm Chark Al Lori. So let's go look at Bitcoin and let me show you what I'm talking about. So Bitcoin right here 
do you see this is where Bitcoin was? What was that? Uh, the 11th. So that was over the weekend. This is where Bitcoin was. So this is where we are on ES. So that could mean, let me go back to Bitcoin. You see this bullish continuation out of it? That could mean bullish continuation for ES. So the I'm leaning bullish here. Typically, this is Yom Kippur. It's by Yom Kippur. And also, the daily 50 MA held. I pounded the table on that one. The yellow line, that's the yellow 50 MA. We came back, we came within $2 of it, touched it, and bounced. This thing now has worked nine times. If we come crashing back through it, that means it stopped working. But it has worked nine times. Dip by, 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 dip by. You get the hint. So as long as something is working, until it changes character, stay with it. So we have one piece of conflicting information. Tomorrow is quad witching, monthly op X. What that means is tomorrow's the dividend and we're gonna wake up tomorrow and SPY is going to be down because the dividend will be taken out of price. And people are gonna be like, whoa, everything, what happened to SPY? We know it's happening. The dividend will come out tomorrow and price will be adjusted. Our moving averages will be off on spot price SPY. So that's why I like to trade ES. And the last four times of monthly op X, we have gone down. So tomorrow, if we go up, that's a change in character. I'm expecting a lot of volatility. Why do you need to know all of this stuff? Well, if you're trading SPY, puts and calls, you need to know that they are priced in that dividend. You need to know that. So just I'm just kind of hammering all these different little details home. So. Overall, I'm leaning bullish today and we're getting a little lower wick. If you bought that dip right there off that four, four, five, six prior resistance, let me know. I like when people get trades. Wow, there we go. So must have had some data as well. So we, we are coming up on resistance, four, four, six, eight, seven, five, four, four, seven, three. So my goal with this pregame show is not only prepare you for the day, but if I see trades live, I want to trade with you live. And that is something that I will slowly introduce because it's scary for me for you all to just jump in a trade blindly. I want you to know why you're why the trade setup is what it is. I want you to use stops. So that worked out. What did it hit? Four, four, five, six. Well, that was fun. Where did we see the fifth? It was on the 15 minute, right? Yep, right here. Four, four, five, six. So Lamont likes to say looking left. So we look left for prior resistance or support where price pivoted. Even though we broke this resistance here, price has memory. And look at that. Look at that hold within a quarter. Doesn't get much better than that. Next resistance, 446875. And you see that that little dip buy is now giving us a lower wick on this candle. We can't bank on that lower wick being a hammer yet, a bullish reversal candle, until it closes. And it will close in 25 minutes. So your next key resistance, 447450. And this is all kind of coming together in this thesis of a bullish lean today after yesterday's powerful move. And it all comes down to Mama QQQ. So I work hard, so my charts aren't too busy, and now this volume even makes it look even more ugly. But I had to do this, con this convergence right here, this confluence. This is what I'm looking for, this area, 1552425. If we get over that, we are most likely getting over the hourly 50 MA. We are changing the four hour trend. We are breaking bull out of the broadening formation. So I hope you get all that. So yesterday, what we were watching was this four hour EQ. We broke bare from the four hour EQ, but those outside bars would have had us looking for this broadening formation, got that lower wick and pop. So I am declaring one five, one five, five, two, five to be the key level today we break up and over that then we've cleared a lot of hurdles we've gotten over the four out we've changed the four hour trend we've gotten over the four out as four hour 50 ma i believe i said hourly 50 ma but we've gotten over the four hour 50 ma so for me this is key because we know nasdaq leads spy around by the nose it's so important with the waiting so this is really important so we have names like amazon that ran super hard yesterday and they still, even with this huge run, they have not changed the four hour trend. We double topped on that four hour right there. We double topped. 
So if we could come back a little, let's get a little inverse head and shoulders going there. You see how that one's just a little more clear? Pull back and give us a right shoulder and give us a little four hour inverse head and shoulders. So despite all the construction that the bulls did on the QQQ chart, the Amazon chart, the Apple chart, Microsoft was beautiful, that trade worked. We had a lot of good trades yesterday, folks. FCX, Lily, a lot of them worked and I hope you got a piece. But they've done a lot of work. Yes, kudos, 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 kudos. But you haven't changed the overall structure. So what they did was they built scaffolding, built scaffolding, and they stopped right at the ceiling. So now they may go sit on the bench, take a break before they can build more scaffolding to get over this key resistance on Amazon. Aggressive bears will be looking to short today any approach to that 3485, 3486 level on Amazon. So back to NASDAQ, this is our key confluence area where a lot of things are converging here, the broadening formation, two resistances. And I should also point out, I like to do the relativity where we go look at all four of the Fab Four futures compared to each other. So we are above the four hour EMAs on NASDAQ. On YM, we are not, we are below. You see the distance between the 50 EMA and price? We are below the four hour EMAs. Bulls are trying to contend with that now. And we are more significantly below the four hour EMAs on RTY. So that was a lot of verbiage. And you could literally throw all of that out the way. Just throw it all out your ears. RTY daily inside bar. That's it. RTY daily inside bar. NASDAQ, I would say daily inside bar. We broke it by $6, but that does not a bull break make. So we could even say daily inside bar there. And on ES, we broke it by 75 cents. That does not a bull break make. And YM, we're cl clearly within an inside bar. So YM and RTY are the weakest, NASDAQ is the strongest, and then ES is the second strongest. So I hope I've given you some context for the day. You got some structure to work out. So let me give you levels on YM, 34721, 34764, support, 34614, and 34379. Look at that hourly 50 MA. It's so key. It, it can really help your trading if you just learn how price reacts or responds to an EMA. And I don't get crazy about what the number is. You could use the 4.1257 EMA. If you use it consistently, that means you still have a system and you could still make money that way. All right, so RTY, we got over this 2229, 2233 is a four hour trend change. NASDAQ four hour trend change is up at 14520, then 14524. ES 4478 4479. Now, NASDAQ may take a breather today, so think about it. They didn't marathon yesterday, they sprinted all day long. Once they got over that five minute trend change that Dan was calling out in the room, then it was a pure full on sprint. So they may take a breather today. That doesn't mean game over, it just means they're taking a breather. So they may tag in their buddies in this relay race and say, Why am an RTY? It is your turn. We are tired. That makes me want to go look at BA. Boeing had a little bit of good news this morning. Ugh, I don't like that chart. Do not like that chart. Weekly inside bar on BA. It broke it by a few pennies, but that's not a bull break. So we have names like BA and GS was weak yesterday. I had a, a list of 30 names I was watching, and it was the only name red on my screen yesterday. So... Bulls, let's see what they can do. Get over 40361, 40455, and that strongly impacts YM. And we know RTY has a lot of XLF names. Let's look at XLF. XLF closed green, so that was constructive. We need to get over 3795 during regular trading hours, and then 3828. Odds favor a lower high compared to 3828. Bears will be waiting. They're going to be sitting there just ready to eat the bulls up at 3828. So just be aware it's a Mars level. All right, let's go look at crypto. Crypto, man, I messed this chart up. Lots of graffiti, four hour inside bars and a four hour inside bar forming the confirmed one, resistance 48369, 47645. I did have some text I just deleted by accident, but here's the deal, hourly uptrend until it isn't. So it looks like we may be getting a little head and shoulders here. Let's see what they're doing here. This is a pretty big pullback on the hourly, but hourly, well, they lost it here too, man. I was plotting this way too early. 
So four hour inside bars, decimals, clarity on Bitcoin, Ethereum. We're breaking bull over that four hour inside bar. Key resistance 36.75, 35.39. Everything going on with Bitcoin and Ethereum comes down to this weekly inside bar and they are churning and grinding higher. These bulls are doing a great job. If you're just now tuning in, my volume is messed up on TradingView. So just excuse it. It'll toggle in and out like right there. It's fine. And then I'll go out to larger time frames and it's not fine. So it's just temperamental today. It just woke up on the wrong side of the bed. All right. So crypto grinding higher weekly inside bar. That's the scoop. Adobe. Where did I write it? Weekly bull flag. There it is. Potential weekly bull flag and got two upgrades this morning. This little lower wick forming and that's ing because it's an active verb because it's not closed yet. It's not formed. It is forming and we get two upgrades. This chart looks really sweet. So they bought that dip hard. So I would love to buy a pullback on a high of low bar or on a back burner setup on Adobe. Got those nice upgrades. And the bears will be sitting here waiting right here. They'll be waiting. Don't worry. But you could get a nice scalp out of it. And I'm just going to stop here and go over options. So I typically talk for 20 to 25 minutes. I can't moderate the room. We have awesome mods there. They'll answer your questions at the very end. I save a little bit of time to go over your request. If you must have your request answered, you could be a Chart Guys member and we answer your request three times a day on live stream. So I did just make a couple slides today. Y'all remember, I know some of you are going to remember, a couple weeks ago I was talking about options. I said there's three important things and then I couldn't remember that third one. Actually, was it last Friday? Was it last Friday when Dan was listening and I said I was a little nervous? I don't know. So options need multiple things to go right to win. Multiple things. So y'all know when we talk about XLE, I tell you we must have SPY and oil going in the same direction for it to work. It makes trading XLE and XLE names like Exxon and Chevron much more difficult because you have multiple components that must go in this, the right direction. Options are the same thing. So if you're trading stocks and your win rate is 60%, you probably won't make it trading options. Options, you not only have to be right with the direction, the name must get there. There, Lori, wrong pronoun. Needs be an adverb name must get there quickly and name must exceed the expected move let me say that again for options to work so if you just buy a put or a call i'm not talking about naked shorting i'm talking about buying a single leg call or single leg put not only do you need to be right about the direction it must get there quickly and it must exceed the expected move options have expected move the atr average true range the expected move they have that price built into the options so if you are failing at the options game let me tell you it's rigged against you you have to be right on three things what can you do to soften that blow verticals verticals help soften the time element so if you buy a call vertical and for amazon to go up and it doesn't get there immediately it's okay you benefit from premium crush if you don't know the direction but you just that you think it's just going to stay sideways and contained you can use iron condors you can sell them for premium collection you can use covered calls there's so many ways to unrig the system against you so this is why most options traders fail because you have to be an amazing stock trader in order to trade options well and make money a few more things if you have no discipline to stay in a trade, you won't make it in options trading. There's a Monte Carlo simulator. It's a mathematic, mathematical formula that basically says if you were to start with X dollars and you trade this, you know, 5%, 5% over and over and over and over, and your win rate is 65%, you will blow up your account by X number of days. So there is a mathematical formula out there for that. I'm not that smart to show that to you. I just know of it. But in order for you not to blow up your account, you have to be able to hold on to winners. So mathematically, you must hold on to some runners in order to survive options trading. So if you get the direction right, you get the timing right, it exceeds the expected move, you get that right, 
then you have to hold on to those winners. You got to get those 100 and 200% wins to offset this game that's rigged against us. You use stops when trades go against you. I don't use stops on the options themselves. I use stops on the underlying. Losses can be survivable of 10 to 20% as long as you're getting these 102% on runners. If you don't have the conviction muscle and discipline muscle to hold on to winners, then yeah, you're not, you're not, I can decisively say you will not survive the options game. And I know so many people are just so intrigued with options because it doesn't take a lot of money and it has defined risk, but you have to know all of these things before you get in it. And you can also sell covered calls. I need to start talking about this more often, like MSOS, if you're trying to buy this dip right now, on the next pullback or sideways consolidation, you should be selling covered calls. AMD actually used to be a wonderful candidate, but now that's over $100 to sell covered calls, you have to have at least 100 shares. The more higher price the name is, the hard, harder it is to sell covered calls, and that's how you just reduce your cost basis. I ripped through about five hours of information in about five minutes right there, but I just caution, caution at the chart, guys. Our goal is to help you succeed at trading and teach you technical analysis, but if you don't do the risk management, we're not going to you're not going to be around for us to help you. So I selfishly need you to survive trading so we can hang out together in the Chart Guys community. All right, so on Adobe, I would love to play this potential hourly bull flag with some Adobe calls. I would probably do 660s for this Friday, and it has to go in the right direction. It has to get there quickly, and it needs to, to exceed the expected move. So our key levels on Adobe are 660.27, 654.47, 654.37, 663.31, and the bears will be sitting there waiting for us at 680. Don't you worry, Dash. Okay. Yeah, hit the like button, please, and the subscribe button, and bring a friend tomorrow. Okay, Dash. Dash, I wish it wasn't setting up like this in pre-market, but it, it is what it is. So Dash breaking bull out of the daily inside bar bull flag had an upgrade, high of low bar setup or stair step, and then that back burner trade is what we got. So we got daily inside bar, daily bull flag, breaking bull in pre-market. It's a little extended now. It's up 2.6%, but on a pullback, you could look to dip by possibly 2.1330 or 2.1170. It got a honker of a upgrade with some lots of positive spin on it. We are not in blue sky territory. Your next resistance above pre-market 22647. So I like this trade above 21686. We enter an area where we have no resistance for $10. All right, FCX. Wow. Yes. <laughs> oh, I wanted to remind y'all to do this or remind me to tell y'all about this. Something that I have added to my trading is this five minute RSI. When we hold the 50 on the five minute, the 50 is that light gray. I know it's kind of hard to see. Well, let me just zoom in. So here's the 50 right here. Look at the five minute RSI on FCX. It never hit drop below 50. That is a relative outperformer. What does RSI stand for? Relative strength. If you need to know, is something strong? Is it above 50? Yes. Is it below 50? Then no, it's not strong. So those dips back to the 50 RSI were actually dip buying opportunities. Actually, I would love to make a trade video where I only use this to trade and I'm going to do it where I just use RSI to trade. I'm going to do this. This would be fun. And my, it's my contention. You can trade with RSI alone and you absolutely can trade with price alone as a price line, not even a can, not even candles, just a line. You can trade with that. You don't need candles. It's always extra information that adds value. But if you're struggling with too many indicators, you're complicating it, strip your charts down and close down the number of tickers that you're watching. Lily, Lily worked for us yesterday. It popped and flopped though. It did come back a little hard on us. But what we were watching was this weekly, we were looking for a weekly higher low. We had this daily stair step trade. We had a, now we have a daily inside bar. We have an inside and up potential high risk of getting stopped out swing candidate. So the daily RSI was oversold looking for a weekly higher low above that sneaky sneak 230.57. And boy, did we get a good trade out of that yesterday. So this is still a swing candidate 
high probability of getting stopped out daily inside bar now to trade off so if we could get over yesterday's high then i would be looking up for a really decent swing lulu position well with the lower wick and needs the market help how it closed yesterday i wish it would have closed green it would have made me happier but we still have a daily bull flag potential declining bear volume on this pullback i still like lulu to the long side msos uh, i didn't write on this one no msos so we have a lot of MJ trade, traders that are freaking awesome and they were nailing this bottom here. So I don't know if this 3190 is valid. It happened in after hours. Yeah, I would just use these daily resistance, but that was a beautiful candle on volume yesterday. Now the bulls have to prove it. So on a pullback, they can't do a Walmart fall apart. So on this, we need a bull flag. We do not need an EQ. Bull flag, bull flag, sorry. So on MSOS, this could be a swing candidate. In September, typically, is when marijuana gets positioned well for a swing into the winter. So a lot of us are all over MSOS. I have a position in this and TCNNF. OPAD. OPAD is a crazy pre-market runner. We are over these levels. I did a little FIB pull. 1801 is the next target on FIB extensions if it were to get there. Keep $16 on your radar on a pullback. That was prior resistance. And then $14.42, your next support on price action, $14.16, should give you some day trading volatility. PLTR, this is actually one of the names I wanted to put on the swing report. It ran so hard last week, I just felt like it was too extended and it just continues to outperform with this beautiful cup and handle. Pattern on the weekly, we've got a potential four hour bull flag. This chart is positioned very well for growth. Resistance 2715, 2736. Oh, this one actually would be a really good one for covered calls. Really good one. So if you trade PLTR, okay, I may add, I'm adding this to my watch list for my swing account. I'd really like to do an experiment and do the covered calls and get my cost basis actually to zero. I may do that. Writing it down. PLTR. Okay, TXN. I posted this one in and uh and Lamont's been all over it, but I posted this in the swing trade. This has a beautiful base. It's a swing candidate on a pullback. It has a squeeze. I want you all to look at the last base break we had. ASAN, I told you all about this one, and it's gone up almost 40%. Look at that base. When we have base breakouts, and that's what's going on right now with TXN, we have a weekly base. So if this were to break bull, it could really get some nice follow through. Same thing if it were to break to the downside as well. It could get nice follow through. UNP, daily inside bar, inside and up potential, high risk of getting stopped out. Swing candidate. If we can get over yesterday's high, which is not a tall order, bulls, 204.65, this could be a great swing candidate. X, the high risk of getting stopped out because we're going counter trend. I went over XLF. QQQ, here are your levels. Should I change that probably? There's your levels. Spy. Here are your levels. 44841. Here's the level for me. Get over 44860, 44860, and then we're cooking with grease. All right, what do y'all have for me? I don't know, Billy. I, I thought that the premiums were decent on PLTR. If we're having some type of hard push, then yes, the premium should go up. Okay, do you have a place where I can learn futures? So, actual CME and CBOE website, they have uh, futures videos on there that are very informative. We have some futures resources that are pended. Pended. Yeah, pended. In our futures channel, we have uh, 18 pinned items up here. So, we do have some awesome resources for futures. If you're interested in trading those futures are awesome for smaller accounts but only if you have discipline for stop losses if not you will get r-e-k-t okay a b and b and then i'm gonna wrap it up because i was long-winded today okay monthly got a little mover weekly i like the lower wick daily Bears will be waiting right here for the bulls. 16824. 16824. This looks very constructive. Potential four hour bull flag. Key support yesterday. Man, we didn't get any support. They just went straight up. 16049. 
RSI setup. So I use this, the CM Ultimate Multi RSI timeframe. The setup is, is watching a ticker that's on, on a pullback and you watch it for a pullback to the 50 for a trade. And with FCX, I was showing how it held 50 almost all day. Okay, IRNT, I've been posting about that one yesterday, today. This is just a huge mover. Someone's gonna get left holding the bag. When the music stops, you better have a chair. You better use stops with this crap, y'all. I'm telling you, it, this is what wipes people out. They keep averaging down. Resistance 5308, 5495, excuse me, 5495, 6020, support $39, 2791. This will end in a trail of tears. On a pullback, I would be looking for a dip buy at this key level here, but just be careful. All right, that's it for me. Thank you so much. Uh, for joining me, hit the like button, hit the subscribe, go check out our community chart guys. And if you're part of TCG, I'll see you in the room in a couple minutes. And if you're not, why not? If you're a pre-gamer, I'll see you tomorrow. You stop losses.